Okay, in today's video, we're going to go over another problem following static equilibrium, and this is, of course, the ladder problem. It's the ladder problem because here we have the ladder. There's a person standing on the ladder. The distance from the ground surface to the point of, act, point of contact between the wall and the ladder, the ladder's leaning against this wall, is 5.5 meters. The la mass of the ladder is 17 kilograms, the mass of the person is 75 kilograms, and we would like to know what is the force of friction between the ground surface and the ladder. That friction force is acting right here. If there was no friction, the ladder would probably slip down and move out to the right. The force of friction opposes the motion, so therefore the force of friction points in that direction, and this is the force we're trying to solve for. Now, this is kind of a static, kind of a uh, classic static equilibrium problem. Nothing is moving, everything is static, and therefore all the forces must be in equilibrium. So to solve this problem, we're going to sum up the forces in the x direction, sum up the forces in the y direction, sum up the torques, set them equal to zero, and solve for this force. In order to sum up the forces and the torques, we should draw in the forces first. The first thing you should do is draw in the forces. There is the force from the person, the weight of the person on the ladder. There is actually the weight from the ladder, which we draw right in the center, because we'll assume the ladder has uniform mass, we draw it right at the center of mass. <clears throat> These two forces are acting in the negative direction. There must be some force acting in the opposite direction because the ladder is not falling through the ground surface. So these two forces are in equilibrium with the other force in the y direction. That's the normal force. Now, we have one force in the x direction. And right here, the ladder is leaning against the wall. The ladder is not falling through the wall. So there must be some other force that's keeping the ladder from falling through the wall. That's the force on the ladder from the wall. So that is all those are all of the forces that are acting in this problem. You'll notice we have no forces acting, all the forces are acting, excuse me, all the forces are acting either in the x direction or the y direction, so we don't need to break any of them into their components. But there's two other pieces of information I want to give you, that is this distance and this distance, and what are those distances? For the first one, this is xl, x for the ladder, the x distance for the ladder is 1.1 meters. That is the distance between this point, the point of contact of the ladder and the floor, and the ground surface, and the extension, the line of action of the force due to the ladder. So that's 1.1 meter. This one is obviously from this point to the intersection of the ground surface with the line of action of the force from the person. And these are going to be important because these are going to be our lever arms when we talk about torque. 1.1 meters for the, for the ladder and 1.6 for the person. Okay, now let's sum up the forces. The next step. Forces in the x direction. We have one, the positive force that will fall force from the wall points in the positive direction. The friction force points in the negative direction. So we're just going to put down the force from the wall minus the force of friction equals zero. In the y direction, these two forces point in the negative direction. This points in the positive direction. So the normal force minus the force from the person minus the force from the ladder equals zero. And then the torques. Now we're going to choose this point to be our axis of rotation. These two forces, the normal force and the friction force, act right at the axis of rotation, of rotation, so therefore they produce no torque. Their lever arm, R, is zero for the normal force and the friction force, so we're not going to sum those up. But these other three forces, the ladder, the person, and the wall, they produce torque. So we're going to sum those three forces up, or the torque from those three forces. Now you'll notice that this force and the force from the ladder act in this direction, down, and if they were to act by themselves, these forces would cause the ladder to rotate in the counterclockwise direction. Forces that cause objects to rotate in the counterclockwise direction produce positive torque. So I'm going to put plus XP, the torque XP, plus the torque from the person, plus the torque from the ladder. Now this force, if it was acting on its own, would cause the ladder to rotate in the clockwise direction. Forces that cause objects to rotate in the clockwise direction produce negative torques that put down negative torque from the wall, and that is also equal to zero. Okay, so we sum them all up. Now I want to point out a couple of important things here. You'll notice for the x forces, the forces in the x direction, there's only two of them, and they're acting in opposite directions. So that means the force from the wall and the force of friction must be equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. Now this is an important point because we're not actually going to solve for the force from the wall. We're going to solve for excuse me, we're not going to actually solve for the force of friction. We're going to solve using our equations for the force from the wall. But we know the force from the wall and the force of friction are equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. So if we can solve for this, then we'll know this is the same force. The magnitude is the same. Okay, now, the y forces we're not going to use. We're not asked to solve for the normal force. We already know the force from the person. We already know the force from the ladder because we're given the mass and we know a g. 
we're not asked for the normal force, but if you were asked for the normal force, you would just know that the, this normal force is equal to the sum of these two forces. Okay, but we're not going to use the, in this problem. We are, of course, going to use the torques. We're going to use the torques. We're going to sum up the torques, and we're going to use the torque equation. The torque is equal to RF sine theta. Well, in order to sum up the torques, we have to know, well, in order to calculate the torque, we have to know what is R, what is F, and what is theta. Well, what is R? R is simply the straight line distance from the axis of rotation measured along this radial vector to the point of application of the force. So for example, for the force from the ladder, it's the distance from this point, this is our axis of rotation, to where the force is applied. So that's R, it's a straight line distance. F is the force. Theta, what is theta? Theta is the angle, always the angle, between the radial vector and the force vector. Between the radial vector and the force vector. It's a particular angle, all right? Now, you will notice in this problem, if we want to calculate the torques, we're not given r. We're not given these distances. We're not given a lot of angles. We can't calculate those using trig functions. We're not given r. We're also not given theta. We don't know what this angle is, okay? We are given the forces, at least two of the three that we need. But we're, even though we're not given r and we're not given theta, we are given <clears throat> something else, and that is these distances right here. And for the force from the ladder, this is our lever arm. And for the person, this is the lever arm. And when we calculate r times the sine of theta, you get the lever arm. So even though we're not given r and theta, we are given the lever arms. So the lever arm, in this case, is the part of r that is perpendicular to the line of action of the force. So I'm going to rewrite this equation as the lever arm times the force. And that's often a common definition people use for torque, the lever arm times the force. All right, so we're given the lever arms. We know the forces. We can calculate the torque. So I'm going to take this equation and apply it to these three torques. The torque from the person, the torque from the ladder, and the torque from the wall. And I'm going to write down that the lever arm for the person, for the person, times the force of the person. That, that'll give us the torque. This is the lever arm and the force. Plus the lever arm from the ladder times the force from the ladder. Minus the lever arm from the, for the wall force times the wall force. For the wall force, this wall is perpendicular to this force. So this is the lever arm. Okay, This is the lever arm for the wall force, 5.5 meters. And those are all equal to zero. Now, we actually have three, six, eight things here. And if you think about it, we know seven of the eight. We know each of the lever arms. We know the masses. We know the acceleration due to gravity. We know this lever arm. We don't know this force. But because we know everything except that force, we can solve pretty easily for that force. And therefore, we know, and then we'll know, that the friction force is equal to the wall force. So I told you before, we're not going to solve for the friction force. We're going to solve for the wall force and then know that the friction force is equal to that. All right, we're going to do that on the next slide. Here's our equation, torque person, torque wall, and this is our um, torque for the wall, excuse me, torque person, torque ladder, and torque wall. I'm going to solve this equation for the force from the wall. That is simply the force from the wall, move this over to the other side, divide by the lever arm from the wall, you get that the torque of the person plus the torque from the ladder divided by the torque from, divided by the lever arm from the, from the wall force will give us FW. So we're just simply gonna plug all those values in. This is the lever arm of the person, this is the force. Lever arm for the ladder, this is the force. Divided by the lever arm for the wall force, and if you do all of that, you'll get that the force from the wall is 247 newtons. Once again, the force from the wall is equal to the friction force, so that means the friction force is also 247 newtons. And there you go. We did it. Okay, now, I, maybe that's kind of a lot to do, but if you just follow those steps, step by step, draw right down the forces, sum up the torques, substitute your values in, be careful with your negative and your positive signs, and you should be able to do that. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, you can do one or all the following three things. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel, get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. You can give me a thumbs up for this video 
And you can also leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.